Alright. First of all, let's talk about why do we need to remote control our PCs. What are the benefits of doing it? What do we get from it? Well, one good reason is security. You can leave your laptop at home, secured, while you are mobile, on a coffee shop or somewhere, using a low-spec cheap device, and still be able to use your expensive high-end laptop that contains important sensitive data, real-time. Another benefit is for support. Let's say you are in its support from the Philippines, and you have a user who's in the UK, having an issue with their laptop. You can only solve the issue by logging into the user's laptop. Instead of sending the laptop over to you, or you going to the UK, you can just remote control the user's laptop and get the troubleshooting and other support work done much faster and easier. Remote desktop can also help on easily transferring files from one device to another. You can work remotely using the same registered work PC, control multiple machines by using one main device, and many other real-world helpful use cases. Maybe one of the well-known remote desktop applications is the built-in Windows application called Windows Remote Desktop. It's basically free since it comes with Windows, it's easy to set up, and it also allows for safe and secure access to files and documents with encrypted connections. But, there's this one application that adds more features to those mentioned, like the ability to remote control a desktop using a phone, literally accessing any device from anywhere in the world, as long as you have an internet connection, a support to connect between multiple platforms like Windows, Mac OS, iOS and Android. The fast file transfer between two remote computers and a built-in chat within the remote desktop. And the best thing is, all of these are free. We are, of course, talking about any viewer. We can start on Google and search for any viewer. The first result should be the any viewer site. Let's go to that. We are immediately presented to download the free version of any viewer here. We can see more information and some reviews below. Let's go to their about page. Here's their main products. For remote access, remote monitoring, remote support and remote game. Their values. Some positive reviews from known companies, then their contact information. Unfortunately, I cannot find any other information about the company. I even asked ChatGPT about them, and apparently, ChatGPT hasn't heard anything about any viewer yet. I also tried to Google any viewer's founder and its headquarter location, and I cannot find any information about them. I guess any viewer is a very new company, so they are literally not searchable yet. Let's go to the pricing. Any viewer has three packages to choose from. The free version, professional and enterprise. You can see the difference here. For me, the free version is a really generous package. The main difference of free against the paid version is the speed. Some other items are higher in the paid version like the simultaneous users, assigned and managed devices, and support coverage. Other items are basically the same across the board. And the paid version have some additional features like privacy mode, high quality image, and mass deployment. You also have an option here for monthly package, which is of course more expensive, as compared to their yearly package. Overall, the free version is a really workable tool already. Two simultaneous sessions, three assigned devices and ten managed devices, is pretty much what most people need. Unless you are using it on an office or something, the free package is more than enough for personal use. Okay. To start using the tool, we of course need to download it. As of the creation of this video, any viewer is at version 3.4.0 and the installer is 41.56 megabytes. After downloading the executable file, just run it and install. No notable things when installing it, just a normal installation process. The installation is really fast, then click and join now to open any viewer application. Alright. We are now in the any viewer UI. We are defaulted to the connect tab, where we are automatically assigned with a unique device ID and the temporary security code. These are the information that you need when you are connecting to this PC. And this right side is where you'll enter the device ID of the machine you want to control or connect to. Under the device tab, you will see all the devices registered under your account. Since this is based on the account, you will need to log in to view the devices here and to perform actions against the devices, like one click connect, transfer file, and synchronize connection history. Let's now go to the settings tab. Under the unattended, you can enable or disable the one click connect for your device. When enabled, other devices that are logged in with your account can connect and control your machine in one click, without the need to enter device ID and security code. You can hover your mouse in the question mark icon beside the setting item to read what the setting is for. You can also set a security code for the one-click connect to make it more secured. But since I'll be using any viewer only in my house, with three devices, I'll disable this for now. Under the recipient settings, you can toggle to allow to accept remote control, and for allowing temporary security code. You also have an option here on when your temporary security code will refresh, to either at the end of a session, every restart, or just manually change it. In the controller, you can select the image quality from three choices. 
high quality which is only available for pro paid version, high speed which will sacrifice the image quality or balance between image quality and speed. I would recommend balanced here. You can also hide the wallpaper of the machine you are remote controlling and also have an option to save the security code so you won't need to re-enter it the next time. In the security, you have an option to lock the interface after a given time or lock the application when the local computer is also locked. If you are planning to remote control the machine though, I would not recommend to enable any of these settings. Lastly, in the basic settings, you have an option to toggle any viewer's auto start option and preventing the machine to go to sleep or hibernate mode, which is important if you are planning to remote control the machine. You can also set the name of the machine here, as well as the default language for the application. You can reset all settings to default as well. This Wi-Fi icon here indicates if you are online or not. Before using any viewer, make sure that you have signed up. It just needs your name, email and set your password. It will email you for a verification code. Once you enter all the information, you're good. And the first tab will be your any viewer username, showing your current license packaged, along with the assigned and managed devices count. Below icons also provide links for the installers of any viewer for Windows, iOS and Android. I am lucky enough to receive a one-year pro license from any viewer themselves, as an appreciation for creating this video. But as always, all opinions here are solely mine and never influenced by anyone. To enter the license, you just need to drop down the account name, then select enter license code. Then just paste the license code and click register. There we go. I am now on pro license for one year. Okay. To remote control another Windows PC, you will need to do the same installation process to that PC and log in using the same username email and password. Then that PC will have its own unique device ID and temporary code. I did that to one of the PC here at home, an ASUS netbook with Intel Celeron N4000 CPU. I'm entering its device ID here in the partner ID, and then connect. Here we go. There it is. I now have access and can control the other PC from the other room. Oops. I received a notification here that I have a poor network. I know. I'm from the Philippines, no need to rub it to my face. I just pressed the start button. Let me open Chrome. There we go. I can basically do anything that I want on that other PC that I am currently connected to. Above, we have some addition controls that we can do. Right now, we are on the original screen mode, and by clicking this toolbar here, we can toggle it to adaptive, where it will resize the screen based on the current machine's resolution. The next toolbar lets you select resolutions that you want, and this resolution is based on the source machine's resolution options. Next is the remote mode, just like what I shown earlier, either balanced, high speed or high image quality then the chat option. Where the two connected machine, the source and the one controlling, can chat with each other. This is a really helpful feature especially if you are doing support. Then the files lets you access the hard drive of the source machine, which you can send to your local drive. The operations lets you press Ctrl Alt Delete, lock the machine being controlled, log out, restart, or shut down, or open Explorer in this PC, open the task manager, or the command prompt. And you can also disable the mouse and keyboard, lock the screen, or lock the machine after you disconnect. A lot of really nice and useful operation controls here. Let me get the laptop that I am controlling and put them side by side. Okay. This is the Intel Celeron PC, the one I'm controlling. And this is the ZenBook 13 OLED, which is the one controlling the other laptop. As you can see the screen are the same. When I am moving the mouse, the is about half a second latency, which is really fast if you think about it. Then when I click something, the source machine actually reacts faster than the one controlling. I think what's happening here is, after doing a click, after half a second, the source machine receives the action done, and it happens to the source machine immediately, but the screen from the any viewer window from the controlling machine takes about 1 to 2 seconds before it is refreshed. So it looks like the source machine is executing the action much faster than the controlling machine who did the action. Anyway, in any rate, I love how fast any viewer is. Considering that I am controlling an Intel Celeron machine here, all the actions I do is almost instant. And the setup is so easy. Alright. Let's now move to cell phone. I'm using an Android phone here. Just go to the Play Store or App Store for iOS, then search for any viewer remote desktop and install it. Once installed, you can open the app. Opening it the first time will give you preview of some of any viewer features. Let's tap get started. We have some personal information protection guideline here, which you of course need to agree. Then log in using the same credentials we used from the Windows machine. After logging in, you will be presented with a list of devices from your account. The first one is this phone, my Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 4. Second in the ZenBook 13, and the third is the Asus Netbook. By the way, connection to phones are one way for now. 
Phones can control Windows machines, but any viewer does not allow you to control a phone. As you can see here, when I select a laptop in my device list, I have all the options here, including the one-click control. But the Samsung phone in the list is gray, and when I select it, all I have is properties, since you cannot connect nor control a phone. Hopefully in the future, any viewer will give us this feature, but for now, we can only control Windows machines. Going back to the phone. Let's try to connect to the Zen Book 13. It allows one-click control, so let's try that. We have a gesture guide here showing us how we can control the Windows machine. Just click finish when you understand them. There we go. We are now inside the Zen Book 13. Okay. I don't know how this touch control works. Let's tap the menu here on the side to open the options, and let's change it to mouse control. There we go. As you can see, we still have the Any Viewer window here controlling the netbook. I can now click the start button of the Zen book. I can open the calendar and basically do anything on the Windows machine using my Android phone. Let me open a Word document here. This is actually the script of this video. Then let's try the keyboard entry here. There you go. You can see the nonsense I typed in the Word document. I am deleting the text from the actual laptop now, and everything is also being reflected in the screen here and the phone. Let's go through the menu options here. First option is to stop the connection. Then we have the power management which lets you lock, restart or shut down the machine being controlled. Then the mode options are the same as what's in the Windows version, makes sense. We can show just the desktop. Then we can also select a resolution based on the source machine's resolution options. We can open this PC, task manager or command prompt. Let's try opening CMD. There we go. We can also rotate the screen, although based on your phone settings, this is already automatic. You can also enter the privacy mode or hide the wallpaper of the source desktop. You can reopen the gesture guide and do a connection diagnostics. Let's now move outside the cell phone screen so I can show you all the three devices side by side. Okay. So, again, the Zen Book 13 is controlling the netbook. Well, my Galaxy Z Flip 4 phone is controlling the Zen Book 13. I am still on mouse mode. Let's try to click the start. Just like in the Zen Book to netbook connection. The action done is transmitted really fast to the source, but the screen refresh from the controller side has a 1 to 2 second delay, so you see the start menu appearing first in the Zen book. Let's open notepad. Then I will try to open the keyboard and type in more gibberish things here. There you go. It is instantaneously being reflected from the Zen book laptop. Let's close the notepad now. And of course it will ask if I want to save. Let's select don't save. Now let's try some cascaded control. Zen Book is still controlling the netbook, and since I am controlling the Zen Book, let's try to control the netbook from the phone. Let's try to open the start menu of the netbook using the phone. See that? The start menu opened first in the netbook, then on the Zen Book, and lastly on the phone. So this proves that a cascaded remote desktop control is possible in any viewer app. Nice. My phone controls the netbook window from the Zen Book, which then controls the netbook. Great. And I also want to show you that any viewer does not require you to be on the same network. As you can see here, the Zen book is connected to Ribby, which is our Converge Wi-Fi. And then my phone is connected to Ribby ULIT, which is our PLDT connection. So, as long as you have an internet connection, regardless of what provider or where you are, you can always use any viewer to control any devices registered in your account. Really great. Alright. For the verdict, I think it is very obvious. I love the tool. I love any viewer. It is really easy to set up. Easy to create an account. There's no any kind of complications at all here. Then the tool is really fast. You can connect in an instant, the response and latency is acceptable, and actually really fast compared to other remote desktop tools. Then you have many extra useful features like the chat, controlling from phones, you don't need to be in the same network to use it, and more. And probably the best thing about any viewer is, their free version is definitely fully featured and usable for personal use. For enterprise or smaller companies that are doing heavy support, any viewer can definitely help a lot for your business. I highly recommend any viewer to everyone. If you enjoy this video, give me a thumbs up. If it has helped you in any way, please do consider subscribing to the channel. Nilasuj for watching. Nobat Air.